This episode is dedicated to the life and memory of Jerry W. Jarrett. Hey, this is Jimmy Street, host of the Live and in Color with Wolfie D podcast. Hear the life and times of professional wrestler Wolfie D. From his time in the territories with PG-13 to his time in WWE, ECW, WCW, TNA, and more. Nothing is off limits and nothing will be held back. Thanks again for tuning in. Here he is, Wolfie D. Hey, y'all, it's Wolfie D. You're listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D. And you know I got my man Jimmy across the street. What's going on in your world today, man? Oh, man, not much, brother. Just kind of hanging and banging. You know how things are. <laughs> hanging and banging, cutting grass, and yeah, the out issues. Uh, you're just telling me that. Yeah, man, it is brutal. I, I'm not cut out for this manual labor stuff. <laughs> That's, rough. That's a rough deal, man. My no, hats off people that uh, have done that kind of work. You know what I'm saying? Like labor totally. work all the life. And, totally. Man, my, I my hats off to those people because I've done a little bit of it. And I, you know, the ones that grew up on the farm and then you know, doing it the rest of their lives and yeah, coal miners and and all them kind of people, man. I respect the hell out of them people, man. Me too. Me too. One hundred percent. Literally, you know, those people are literally the backbone of the country, man. They are, yeah. and uh, there are some wrestling fans too, usually. But if they got time to watch it. <laughs> And NASCAR. Yeah, NASCAR. Country music, NASCAR, and wrestling fans are you you can almost probably go to the shows in the city of the different ones and you see the same people, I guarantee it. And that's yeah. not public fun. That's just that's the uh, demographic. Definitely, definitely. Good people. I, that's that's my neck of the woods. I'm from southwestern Virginia. So I'm sorry, yeah. Southwest Virginia, not Southwest. Virginia. Anyway, <laughs> it's all the same area. <laughs> but yeah, man, all good people, hardworking people. You know, they're. I remember those old farmers, man. They had like the leathery skin because they'd been out in the sun, and you know, yeah. but both made. Kind of like I was just sitting here thinking, man, about the you know the show we're doing today, and it, that uh, that describes Jerry Jarrett a lot. Even though he wasn't a laborer, he's uh, you know, he he worked his butt off to get what he had, you know. Self-made man, that's a great way to look at that. You know, it's funny because yeah, I know we're a couple weeks later than that, but yeah. sometimes we book ahead and then get things in the can and then roll it out, and then things yeah. just happen in real life, man. And yeah. you know, it's 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 tough. But I'm right now our our listeners they know that you know how we do. totally. Uh, we do what we can. <laughs> and I'm glad you wanted to do this show still. You know, you were like, yes, let's make sure we do this show. And yes. you even yes. sent me this idea in the middle of me doing grand jury duty. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's true, yeah. but it's still, you did it. And it's good. So, but yeah, I mean, what would, what would Jerry say? Like, let's say the show's running behind. What would Jerry say to get at things rolling? If it was, if we were running behind? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get on the hell out of the damn ring. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tell him to go home. Well, I'm sure throughout Jerry Jarrett's career, if a show was starting late, he would say, get your ass out there and get wrestling. And that's what we're going to do today. So yeah. I don't want to say that's a quote. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. But, but, but definitely. Let's get out there and get going. We're, we're running behind, boys. Let's go. <laughs> I like that one. All right. We'll be right back after these messages. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles. We win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at marines.com. Hey, folks, to get your official Live It In Color with Wolfie D merchandise, go to prowrestlingtees.com forward slash live Wolfie D. Check it out. If you're listening to Live It In Color with Wolfie D on Apple Podcast and like what you're hearing, Go ahead and leave a five-star rating. And while you're at it, write a review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you'd like to hear in the future. It's very important to us and always appreciated. 
Thanks again. Okay, we're back with the Jerry Jarrett Tribute Show today. I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoy this. Uh, we, like we said, it, we just felt like it was something to do. Um, you know, I attended the funeral, and it was it was very moving. And, and I mean, as the, the first person I saw when I came in was Jeff, and I went straight over to him and I hugged him, and I said, "Man, I said I hate these things because I don't ever know what to say." He said, oh, you know, you know, well, that's between us, but I, I, that, that's just how I feel when I go to those things, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I say those things, it's just, just funerals are, I don't know. I, I, I don't think anybody really like really likes them, but I'm just one that I hadn't been to, you know, as far as wrestling, um, being somebody, uh, I think it might've been Danny Davis got to see him, uh, which was great. Uh, or George Weingart, one of the we were three talking. And, um, you know, if we went to these things every time somebody that we knew in the business died, we'd be like professional funeral attenders. Seriously. And it's sad to say, but as far as wrestling funerals, uh, strangely enough, the first one I ever went to, and I, I had just gotten in the business or was getting in the business, is when Tojo Yamamoto died. And actually, Jerry Jarrett was the, he gave the, the eulogy, and it was very emotional. And uh, Jerry got very emotional. So that was kind of weird to me. You know, I thought of it in that way. Yeah. Um, I, went to, I went to Eddie Gilbert's funeral. And I'm trying to think. Um, I, I, I'm forgive me if I'm forgetting somebody that I should really know, but I, I don't think that I have. But at any rate, man, it's just not my thing. It's just yeah. not my thing. And me and Jamie talked about that. He wasn't there, but he gets uh, he has like panic attacks because you know he's he's missed a few that we thought was, he was going to be there. Nobody's mad at him for it or whatever, but uh, just saying he, it freaks him out. So anyway, this was really nice. Uh, Jimmy, I don't mean, I want everybody to know I'm having a hard time weighing whether what my mood is uh, in this show. I don't obviously want to bring anybody down, but I also don't want to be too lighthearted about everything. So yeah. Jimmy, um, I mean, we Ask me a question about it if you want to. <laughs> I just don't know where else to go with it. It was nice, uh, emotional, and I, I don't want to be too – I think they streamed it. So if, if it, I, I think it's actually on YouTube. So if you want to watch it, guys, go watch it. I, I just don't want to sit here and quote yeah. the people, things like that. You know what I mean? Right. We're not here to be a play-by-play for the funeral. We're not – You know, I know it was a star-studded event. A, a lot of people came to support Jeff. And, you know, just the man that was Jerry Jarrett. You know, what, yeah. here, you know, we're not like people watching. You weren't there for that. The whole reason was to pay the respects to the man. for the, yeah. And it's the same reason we're doing this show. It's to pay the respects to the man that – Jump started your career, you know, and he took you from the minor leagues to to the major leagues. And, you know, had it not been for him, you've said it many times and we'll talk about this a little bit more here in the in this episode. You know, had it not been for him, you guys, you know, your goal was to get to the USWA. That was your goal. And you got there because of him and you you got there because of yourselves and the gimmick also. But he He was the opportunity. He opened the door, you know. Right. You were knocking, <laughs> and he opened it. So, yeah, really. <laughs> so, do you think? Like, I, I guess the the only question I really want to ask about the funeral was obviously mm-hmm. they said it was you know sold out. They were hanging from the rafters, kind of deal. But do you feel like Jerry would have appreciated it? Do you feel like he was? I guess oh, his I, wishes would have been done. I have no doubt about that. I mean, yeah. Uh, Jerry and I were not like I kept in touch a little bit over the years, um, but we were never like I rode with him a few times, but I, I wouldn't. I, there's people in the business that were like at the funeral that a lot of the fans might not even know who they are and never really did anything. We're closer personally to Jerry probably than I was, especially in the later years with some of the partnerships he had and things like that. Sure. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think he'd be 
tickled to death. Uh, I do. And, and I want to go back because it, it, talking that made me realize the other funeral, the only other funeral I attended that, I'm, that I can think of right now is uh, Brian Lawler's and a completely different type of funeral. Um, completely, but both awesome. And uh, yeah. Yeah. it's a funeral can be awesome. Right. I guess is it does it pay the proper respects and and it sounds yeah. like both of them did and you yeah. know tragedy befell Brian and you know and not to say anything but Jerry got to live a good life man Jerry got yeah. to live a long life and not mm-hmm. to say that you know Jeff or anybody you know, I know Jeff and he even had their ups and downs and we're not here to talk about that but what I mean yeah. is is they it's just kind of the wrestling business right sometimes that gets in the way feelings get hurt that kind of thing yeah as far as you like, and him being close you're kind of two different generations it's like there's not a ton of common ground outside of pro wrestling you know yeah yeah so i'm sure you could talk about the weather and the news but other than that you know not a ton of common ground now the one main thing that y'all have is that you both your career really kicked off in memphis Mm -hmm. and also you know how much memphis meant to you now i wanted to ask you this kind of and how different was it when jerry was booking versus lawler was booking did you notice any differences oh yeah there's a lot of differences in those two uh payoffs for one uh, <laughs> and, and and also you got you got to put Randy in there. Yeah, of course. But the majority, because uh, honestly, once um, once Jerry gave us the break and 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 pushed us as undercard little heels and and all that stuff, and uh, when when I said that he ended up uh, firing us because we we our car blew up and we couldn't make the town and. We had been late a number of times because of that old Thunderbird blowing tires and all this kind of stuff. He was just he he, he was so high on us, and then just like that, he's just uh-uh, I'm done with him. <laughs> so yeah. I yeah. think that's when we went to Mexico, and when, when we came back, Randy was booking. So you know, yeah. it, Jerry always saw everything. Obviously, I, I think he saw most of it uh, uh, here and there from afar. You know what I mean? But um, right. Uh, because I do know that he attended um, the rock and roll and uh, PG match in Louisville. And uh, he, he was, he said, like when we walked out and got the big pop, the baby face pop, he said, Randy, what have you done with these boys or something to that effect? <laughs> and Jerry Jerk's sitting right beside me. And I don't know if I ever told you this, but. Mm-hmm. He just wasn't too much acting like he was interested. He was getting up to go. I said, no, you got to watch this match. He said, it is. I said, rock and roll and PG. And he said, I've, I've seen the rock and roll a million times. And I'm seeing PG. Uh, so he was pretty much saying, this ain't going to be anything special. I said, no. I said, you need to sit here and watch this match. And it came through. It was more than what I thought it would be. And I thought it would be great. I thought it would be the match of the night. I didn't necessarily think it would be uh, the the match uh, that would be, I think, the best match I ever booked in my life. Yeah. The part one what? of yeah. PG and Rock and Roll. But then he was like, he was sitting in his uh, cup to Dread Man, and he said, Kid, what in the hell have y'all done with PG-13? <laughs> I said, got him over, boss, got him over. So, yeah, that was cool, man. Y'all got over in the boss's eyes because at that time, he probably didn't see you and rock and roll on the same level. And all of a sudden, boom, holy shit, here they are. You know, what have you done? I love that. And that's a great story. And I'm glad Randy told us that when he was on our show. Yeah. Yeah, So, I mean, you know, obviously, Randy meant a lot to you as booking, too. And and we can't forget that. I do know this, that, you know, there's such a deep and great history with all of you all together that it was kind of like you all were a military unit you know what i mean like you and jamie doug tommy y'all were like the infantry and you had lawler who was like a two-star three-star general you had jerry who was like a for a four-star general you had randy who was like a corporal or whatever you know what i mean and you hey, guys were kind of- mafia. 
but <laughs> I, I wasn't in the Memphis Mafia, but yeah, there was or what Lawler's Army, I think they called it. Okay, yeah, well, not that Memphis Mafia, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, man, and I mean, it, to me, I just think it's uh, it's it's a blessing that you got to know the man, and obviously that you got to pay your respects to him. And I'm happy. I mean, it's a who's who that was there, and and I think that proves the testament to that man. And obviously, like we've said before, Vince McMahon even trusted him enough that he was going to let him run his company while the chance that McMahon was going to prison. So that. Is said quite a bit. People know that, but at the same time, that should be said more <laughs> because yeah. that's that's just impressive to me. I don't care who you yeah. are, you know. So, well, you, we've got these sets of videos here, Wolfie D. So uh, there are four videos that were e- either outtakes or part of your your Wolfie D documentary that was done ten or so years ago, and now what we're going to do is we're going to basically do it very similar to our Josephus episode. If you guys listen to that one, if you haven't definitely go back and listen to that one, because that was one of our most heartfelt episodes between the two of us. Now with this one, we're going to do it very similar. What we're going to do is we're going to listen to these tracks of, of Jerry talking. We're going to play them on the air here. And then what we'll do is we'll then have Wolfie react to them. And the first two are are kind of about him, which is good for a tribute show. The first one is called Jerry Jarrett, Memphis and me. And I will have the links to all these in the show notes. You just got to scroll down if you want to watch them later. Of course, the audio will be in the episode. So with that being said, this one again is called Jerry Jarrett, Memphis and me. This will be a good one because this kind of talks about his start and Memphis and how much Memphis meant to him. So grew up in the business. My mother sold tickets for the local promoter. So that that gave me an end. Uh, I started out refereeing, selling tickets, taking up tickets. And then I had an opportunity to uh, get to know the promoters, and one day they needed a referee, and so I, that was my first real break. It was a progression from that to. Uh, wrestling and from the very beginning I liked being behind the scenes and the producing of wrestling the telling the stories I got a job first booking Memphis and then I went and booked Atlanta for a promoter named Jim Barnett and uh, then Nick and Roy figured that I they wanted me back here and then, and so like they I said this is, this, this is Jerry's house I had trouble with uh, Nick and his son, which led to a split, and I opened my own business. The result was Memphis Wrestling that we know today. If I have a specialty, it's recognizing the inner talent in young men, helping them, make no mistake about it, I owe all of my success to the great talent that came through Memphis. Had a short run in uh, New York and had a, with Vince McMahon, and a short run in WCW. But my heart and my mind and my soul lies in Memphis wrestling. I got in the ring in 1967. Started promoting about 71 with uh, Louisville, Evansville. About 72 could mark the beginning of the glory years of Memphis. And I'm talking about from a dollar value. It, it was good all through the 70s, all through the 80s, and probably the first half of the 90s. Real good money. Middle now, half, Vince Jerry, McMahon middle half. started <laughs> at some point in time. When he started his expansion mark the beginning of the end for the territory system. Uh, we were fortunate because we did not rely on established talent. Some people say we created our own. I like to think that we allowed new stars to develop by giving them a chance and helping nudge them here and nudge them there and don't do that and this is not good for you. Back when wrestlers listened to their bookers. And so when the other territories and the NWA folded, we were able to survive because we kept new talent coming along. I sold my interest to Jerry Lawler in 99. 
because my stint in New York and WCW really burned me out on wrestling. It lasted about a year after that with the Selka family and Lola and whoever he had over there. So, yeah, I would say 95 marked the uh, beginning of the decline. Six. (laughs) Six and seven. Yeah. So, I mean, that right there just shows how much, you know, not only how much Memphis meant to him, obviously that's a no brainer, but how much him doing the job that he did for Memphis meant to him. You know what I mean? He, he did actually enjoy his job. (laughs) Yeah. He he did good, man. You cannot deny that, man. Nobody can. No. About steering people, bumping them in the right direction and stuff. And, you know, I made a comment, but it's true. It's like, yeah, you can, you know, just like our story, he saw something and then he kind of developed us and, right. and by those videos. And, you know, and, and we got to work with people that he didn't necessarily have to coach us directly face to face a lot because we were working with guys that did that for him. And that's smart too. You know, let's put Absolutely. this, these two young kids who are green as fucking you know, baby shit. And <laughs> let's put them in there with Danny Davis and Ken Wayne. And let's, let's, let's teach them how to work. You know, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it gives me goosebumps at this very moment to when I said that, you know, so yeah, it's it's huge, man. I mean, I, I know we've talked about you know the nightmares and, and Danny Davis and stuff, but do you remember how how Danny and and Jerry were together? Do you remember no, how they? Because I mean, you know, they all had their in most of the buildings there was an office room and stuff like that, and unless you got called in there, you kind of stayed away from that end end of the building, and you know, obviously. Uh, Jerry's going to give Danny and then the finish and, and all that kind of stuff. Now, he, the TV might have been different, but yeah, just, uh, yeah, it, it's just too bad that stomach, it's not available to some people now, man. I've, I've said this a hundred times. You can be young and you can be talented and you can be full of potential till potential's coming out your ears. Yeah. But unless you're developed correctly, you know, you're just not going to. You're not going to get th- get there. Yeah. You know, they always talk about the two Jerry's from Memphis. And obviously, I remember you saying that Lawler wasn't able to make it. And obviously, that's – I'm sure it breaks his heart because, you know, they were – they were Memphis, you know what I mean? If if yeah. if yeah. you didn't have Jerry and Jerry, you know. He wrote a very uh, – he wrote a letter that uh, – I can't remember whether Dave Brown read it or Jeff read it, but it was – it was very touching. So he was he was there in spirit and heart, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've had like Eddie Marlin and Lance Russell and, and all yeah. these guys that have passed through the time, but this one is a big chunk of Memphis for sure, Blues and Jerry. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking about that. Like I was at the funeral thinking, man, we almost lost Lawler, uh, I guess, the week before. Right. And he's – can you imagine? I mean, any of it's awful, and I'm glad the King's still with us. But if if that, if we had lost both of them in the same week, that would have been the most insane thing ever. It would have been, and thankfully it didn't happen. And you know, I will say this: Memphis. What it did they say? You know that ninety seven, ninety eight, USWA went out of business. Power Pro took over, but in a lot of cases, the 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 major part of overall the Memphis territory died with yeah. USWA. And Absolutely. if you if you think about it, the Memphis territory took a big hit in memory it'll always be here but at the same time with the loss of jerry it's it's there's no yeah. there's no real coming back i guess from that one so nah. so this next one is is all about the fans this was a quick one that's pretty cool that he's talking it's called jerry jarrett memphis fans once again these links will be in the notes but i'll also be playing the audio while we are talking here i'm not sure that that the Memphis fans are are any different from any other fans, other than we allow the people to suspend this belief. Don't confuse that with believing that what well, our wrestling was real and all the other wasn't. 
but we allowed them, like in a good movie, to not think about it being scripted while they were there, so they could suspend disbelief. When you do that to the wrestling fans, you create a culture of realism. So they identify with the wrestlers, and they hurt when they hurt, and they rejoice when the wrestler rejoices. That is the definition of passion. Yeah. And the Memphis wrestling fans were always the most passionate fans in the country. Yeah. Yeah, he's right, man. Memphis fans were awesome. I mean, the Memphis Territory fans, you know, I think that should be added in there because I know that's what he means. You know, a lot of people, you hear them, oh, Memphis guys, Memphis guys, Memphis guys. They're also Nashville guys and Louisville guys. And Louisville guys. That yeah. whole Arkansas, you know, we, that whole area. So, yeah. And, and I mean, I remember working what was it 2010 2011 i'm sorry i keep bringing this up all the time but i remember working in the nashville scene and i remember looking out in the crowd and you know not everybody is on the same level either mark wise or smart mark or whatever yeah. what but i remember yeah. thinking man they still believe here this is oh, crazy yeah. oh, and yeah. that was a total snowball from memphis you know what I mean? And we yep. say Memphis, but like you said, Memphis territory. So Nashville is where I worked mostly, and it was they still believe out there. And, you know, some people scoff at that, especially some of the more, you know, intelligent, and I'm doing quote marks here. Yeah. You know, air, it, air, air, what is it called? Air bunnies or something? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. The, the intelligent people that talk about wrestling scoff at the people who still believe or still can suspend their disbelief. Exactly. But, That's it. It's like, you know, you those are my favorite people. Some, now some, some do. And as the days uh, that have passed, you know, man, they did believe 100%. 100%. And that's awesome too. That made it so fun, man. It made it. Those so are my favorites. Have people that would get invested in you emotionally and you could orchestrate the crowd, you know, like a conductor. And that's Absolutely. what made it even uh, more fun. And not to say, you know, uh, Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn, they had them. Yeah. They had them, man. So it's still possible if you do it right, folks. <laughs> You're right. You're exactly right. And you know what? That's I love those people. I think those people are the best part of pro wrestling. The ones that still give it and let it, you know, be what it is and exactly. not have to analyze it like scene for scene and say, I really wish, you know, like, cause half the time, even you, right. Wolfie, like half the time you can watch a match and say, well, you'll, you'll be, I'll be like, Wolfie, what do you think they were? Well, I don't know really what they were planning to do there. So it's like, even you are like, I don't know what they were planning to do. So I'm just going to sit back and watch it as is because yeah. unless you were in on the meeting that they had, they're like, okay, Sammy, you're going over on Roman or whatever. I'm just making that up but right. you don't know what they were playing and so a lot of times when i ask you like hey did you see that part what do you think they were trying to do you're like well i think that this but i don't know what they were you know what i don't yeah. know what their plans were so that means a lot right i mean yeah. you know yeah. and so. he's he's talking about too you know um he made sure that his wrestlers went out of their way to kayfabe. I mean, it was a, it was a no brainer back then, but back, you can actually, you can still kayfabe and yeah. uh, it's okay. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and I don't mean you, you just like, I wouldn't want to show up at an event with the guy I'm wrestling to this day. I would. Right. Do that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, so you can you can kayfabe a little bit. <laughs> you, it won't hurt you a bit to kayfabe. It won't. I promise. It'll actually make your shit better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even if it's just for you, man. You know, even if it's just for you, yeah. you know. I mean, ninety percent of the guys on the indies today are also very avid fans, are they not? Yes. I mean, yes, they are. Yeah, and I'm saying like barely any probably don't watch the product, and which they should. I mean, they, they should. Yeah. yeah. Then you got, but I don't know. I don't want to get too off on the uh, fucking indie. 
the, the, the attitude indy the attitude here i don't know but uh the attitude of the folks there uh, it's just you can still do it and that's what he's talking about that we have Absolutely. people going out of their way to um you know take the business seriously and make people either believe it or enjoy what we were doing so much like you said that you could sit there and watch it and not cr- judge and critique everything you went with your emotions yeah I think that's a really good place to pause right here with this tribute to Jerry Jarrett. We'll be right back after these important messages. Let's take a quick time out and get a word from one of my dope ass sponsors. And we'll be right back with more live and in color with Wolfie D. Getting engaged is a moment worth cherishing. A -a one-of-a-kind ring that you design at Blue Nile can help your love sparkle. Just choose your diamond and setting. When you've found the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Finding the right engagement ring can be nerve-wracking. At Blue Nile, you'll have the expert guidance needed and a diamond guarantee that ensures you're getting the highest quality at the best price. Cherish all of life's moments and save up to 30% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo Concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Hey folks, this is Wolfie D here, and if you are looking to buy or sell a home in Tennessee or Southern Kentucky, you're going to want to call my buddy, the rock star realtor, Benji Bowie. And you say, Wolfie, how do I get in touch with this rock star? Well, you can call him directly at 615-390-8216. You can go to his website, BowieHomes.com. That's B-U-I-E Homes.com. Or you can email him at BenBowie34 at gmail.com. When you need a home, you need the rock star realtor. Benji is a member of Exit Realty's Garden Gate team in Gallatin, Tennessee. Okay, guys, we're back and uh, about ready to watch the third portion of this four portion uh, show uh, interview that, that Jerry did. Uh, Jimmy, I mean, I'm ready to, to watch it. This one's actually uh, the longest one of the bunch, about eight minutes long. Yeah, and I mean, I think we can kick right in here. It's called Jerry Jarrett Rated PG-13. Once again, if you want to watch the video, the link will be in the notes. But yeah, I think you're right. Let's go ahead and kick it in, Wolfie. All right. At the time, I lived in in Hendersonville, and I had a farm. And One day, we got a knock on the door, and they came. I had watched Jamie (laughs) grow up, because, and I'm talking about from four or five years old. Uh, Bill Dundee was a good, not only wrestled for me, but was a good friend of mine. And he is a good friend of mine. Jamie, his kid, was uh, problematic. <laughs> what happens to you is time has a way with kids of you still picturing them 10 or 11 years old when all of a sudden they're grown. When Jamie and Whoopi came said, we're a tag team, we'd like to be... Booked. My first, I didn't say it, but my first thought was, yes, and I'm Superman. I'm going to jump off the building (laughs) because I just, you know, I couldn't picture it. It was the craziest get up, garb, costume, what have you. Remember, if if we make him smile, so. Hubcap around the front of it. The next thought that went through my mind, because now that we're sitting here talking about it, it, it becomes more vivid. I had watched Nick Goulas and Roy Welch get old mentally, and I had told myself, I'm never going to do that. I'm going to keep an open mind that life and the world changes. So I said, well, I don't guess it'll hurt to take a look at them. That was really the beginning (laughs) of a terrific experience because the kids liked them, whether they were good guys or bad guys. The young people 
like them, and they were they were cutting edge at the time. They seem to have gotten over, to the best of my memory, almost immediately. A lot of people say that we were the forerunner to the extreme wrestling with Tupelo Brawl, you know, the hardcore stuff. Uh, they were cutting edge hardcore. Woofy was a very good wrestler. Thank a very you, Jerry. solid wrestler. He was in the traditional lot, mode right? that kept it from being a sideshow. Jamie was always a wild kid, a wild child. <laughs> and I don't mean that in the negative sense, but I mean, he's just, the last picture I saw on the Facebook, he had a goofy, <laughs> well, it's not goofy to him, but, you know, haircut. And, but the combination of the two equaled charisma. A tag team is like a marriage, and both partners have to bring something to the table. In the case of Woofie and Jamie, Woofie was the wrestler that carried every match. Jamie had a unique factor, for lack of a better word, let's call it the it factor, that in combination with Woofie's great wrestling skills, made them a charismatic tag team. If you take Jamie and put it on his own, it could be just comical. Oh, God, don't tell me. You mean they're not black? (laughs) 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 This is amazing. (laughs) No, let me tell you something. Woofie and Jamie... White was irre- irrelevant. It, they walked the walk and talked the talk, and I don't think anybody, black or white, questioned that they were real. They were Fucking real. Right. <laughs> yeah. And one advantage that I think Memphis had, and it's the, I think it explains why people sit and watch YouTube. So many fans. Uh, exist today was that my goal and my encouragement to the wrestlers was keep it real. What I tried to do a lot of is opposite from what a lot of promoters tried to do. A lot of promoter would create a character in their head. Vince does this. Right. And then try to get somebody to match that character. Wolfie and Jamie played themselves. Right. How many times have I said that? Um, Absolutely. Yes, they were the real deal. And and that's what I kind of saw at the farm that day. That, you know, these guys aren't acting. <laughs> because, see, I knew Jamie <laughs> growing up as the kid. Bill would get in the car and we'd go to the town. And say, I don't know what I'm going to do with that boy. He is nuts. Same as when I saw Jeff up there, you know, my kids. Same as when I saw Jerry Lawler announce my kids. You know, when you are instrumental in the first matches and watch the development, you can't help but feel like there's a relationship between you. Yes, I was thrilled to death. I was... You know, the moon dogs went up. I was thrilled with them. No, I was, I was real happy. The reality of PG 13 was that they could have gotten a reverse Michael Jackson treatment and nobody would have questioned it. <laughs> reverse Michael Jackson. We, you know, they, they put together some videos. I'm not a rap fan. Yeah. I don't know the genre. Gary Lawler said that it, too. But I know from what I saw on MTV, I thought they were pretty darn good. That (laughs) helped. Back in those days, we tried to prepare the fans for what they were going to see. So that when they came out to the ring, rapping and jiving. Memphis was the king of that. The fans wouldn't go, what is that? So by doing videos and let the people anticipated. Then when they come through the curtain, 
the people would know them. I, I don't doubt at all that some of the white rappers didn't at some point in time see the, one of their videos. I know funny. that back in it those is. days, everybody watched Memphis TV. Even if they lived in New York, they would, they would get people. We did a, uh, a video with the fabs and used a ZZ top. I think it was ZZ top sharp dress man. Yeah. And they called yeah. Yeah. and said that video is better than ours. We just wanted you to know. We loved it. <laughs> Who knows? That's pretty impressive. Maybe if that's Eminem, true if that is a shoot, saw yes. and Jamie and said, you know, I can make a living. I can do that. I don't know. I like how he ended it with, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so first reactions, how does that feel? I know you've watched this a couple times probably, but yeah. how does that feel, man? I mean, it's awesome. And and obviously I saw it. I don't, I can't remember if I was in the room or not. Probably not. But I, I was there when he did the documentary stuff. And obviously this is an outtake that I didn't see, I don't believe, or at least all of that. But um up until this was posted right but, and it's uh it feels good man it does it's almost like you know i've kind of had a chip on my shoulder about certain things and yeah and, but when somebody like that justifies and it, it, somebody with his credibility justifies your shit it's pretty fucking cool man and he's saying what all of us felt. I mean, honestly, you yeah. know, you were the in ring. Jamie was the mouthpiece, and there's nothing wrong with that. But Jamie could go. That's not the question here. Yeah. I, I don't mean it that way. I'm no. just saying your strengths were there. Where you know, and I think you're proud of that. You who wouldn't be? You know, yeah. To, and I know Jamie's proud for his end of it. You absolutely, know? And, he and should be. By, you know? by the end of it, like I've said before, by the end of it. We've learned from each other, and we're both good on both ends of that, you know? Totally, totally. And if you watch, like, if you watch a Jamie, I've watched some of this on the Brian Turner's VHS Rehab YouTube channel. I've watched quite a few Jamie singles matches. That cat can go. I mean, he's holding his own, just like I've seen on that same channel, your promos. And you're killing it. You're calling out Jackie Fargo, saying you're going to whip the whole place. Yeah. yeah, man. Trust me, it's evident that both of you took the best parts from one another and evolved that. But I'm imagining just like you where you felt like you knew what you were doing the second you stepped in the ring since jamie is that second generation talent i, I gotta imagine a lot of that is is true for him too you know right 100 percent, man 100 uh, percent. i'm 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 glad that he remembered the story of you know us knocking on the door and putting the shit on and you know because i've told it so many times and then to hear him say it you know in a situation uh, unfortunately like this is I mean just it's it's really cool man I mean I don't yeah. know I don't have another word man kind of at a loss of the word cool is all I can think of man but it gets to, it's good to see this stuff and I mean it's there forever if you need to see it again it's there and you can <laughs> listen to this episode or whatever but what I mean by that is like the beauty of technology these days is do we really ever die I know we're no longer here but there's yeah. so much stuff out there that if you ever yeah. needed to hear what Jared Jarrett thought of Wolfie D there it is right there you know yeah. so Very and awesome. we got a little more here you know <laughs> so the next video is actually called Jerry Jarrett. It's called Jerry Jarrett, Wolfie D, and TNA. And I imagine this is, you know, extending on from PG-13 and talking right. a little more about your post-PG-13 career. And, you know, talk about, like, let's quickly before we start in this, what were your interactions with Jerry at the very beginning of TNA? Or was it mostly Jeff? Mostly Jeff. Mostly yeah. Jeff. Uh, I'm trying to think, and then I'm trying to think the beginning of who the agents were. It wasn't not, my memory doesn't serve me well on that, man. Um, but yes, I mean, obviously, if you go, we went in the office for whatever, and I think I think I had mostly with Jeff, but then there was also some Jerry. But you know how my memory is, and and you know, at this point in my career, I, it was like riding a bicycle and okay, that's what you need. Okay, cool. Bye. And then, <laughs> <laughs> right. 
you're on to the next thing thinking about, okay, we need that. All right, let's build out this match and then right. we'll go exactly. from there. Let me yeah. go take care of the mind of this. Yeah. I, I understand what you need. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, to know that you were there is a, is a number one thought of what the Jarrett's think of you, obviously. Yeah. And you've always been involved somewhat with, with them and, and, you know, because that just shows their, their belief in you and, yeah, you know, Hey, yeah. God very, bless them for it. You know? Very much appreciated is all I can say. Absolutely. Well, this next video, like I said, is called Jerry Jarrett, Wolfie D and TNA. You guys want to see it? It's in the links in the show notes. But let's go ahead and crank it up here, Wolfie D. What do you say? All right, here we go. I had a great respect for Wolfie because he was... That first sentence, he man, the mold. Thank you. He would have been a, a star in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. <laughs> When we started TNA wrestling, you know, Wolfie came in and wrestled for us there. I deferred to Jeff. The Nick and George Goulas was imprinted in my mind to uh, to not dominate if your partner's with your child. I deferred to Jeff when we started TNA at almost every level. Now, when we talked about That's what Wolfie, I, was I said, yeah. you know, he's a great wrestler. Because TNA, I don't, you know, it's not there now, but... We were, the original goal was to uh, bring back the wrestling that allowed the fans to suspend disbelief. Air bunnies. So, <laughs> you know, I was an advocate of Wolfie because of my respect for his wrestling ability. Air bunnies. Well, yeah, I think wrestling yeah. should have been utilized more. It's no secret what I think of Vince Russo. If I was promoting a show, Wolfie would be one of my main event wrestlers, single wrestler. Wow. Vince Russo, Jamie would have been his main event. That's not to say, <laughs> so because true, I dude. used them both. Yeah. When they were together, Wolfie's exceptional wrestling ability would tame Jamie's craziness. If you take <laughs> Wolfie away from Jamie, you have a Vince Russo product. And and see, that that's coming across terrible. I don't mean that. I really like, you know, business, wrestling is business. So when you talk about drawing money, it's you take who I like and don't like and put it over here on the back burner. It's a philosophical view of wrestling that makes the determine determination of who you push and who you don't push. Yeah. And uh, so the answer to your question is no, not at all. I don't think, uh, you know, I would have done it totally, totally different. When I read it that he was going to rehab on Facebook, I never, it certainly never affected his performance. Thank you. I mean, I don't know how far back it goes, back to when he was a kid, but I don't remember it in the Memphis days. I don't remember it at TNA. Uh, quite honestly, I was shocked. When I read about it. So, you know, I'm, I wish I could help you more than I can. So obviously at that very end there, he was talking about some stuff that was due to this documentary. You know what yeah. I mean? This yeah. documentary was about your addiction and, and yeah. your recovery. And it's a constant thing that you battle every day. And he recognized that. What I think that says right there is that shows the level of professionalism that you approached wrestling that. If TNA would have been a 365 day a year product, you might have never even needed rehab because what you've told me several times and what this shows to me right there is when the job had to be done, you did the job. You were absolutely 100% professional you had an addiction you had a battle you had a, a monkey on your back that's how things are that's that was the slant of this documentary that we're taking these excerpts from yeah. but what i think you can take from what he said right there is it shows the level of professionalism that you held yourself to man and i think that's something to be applauded you know what i mean well i mean the thing is man yeah like he's he's correct though like in memphis and and all that, man. I mean, not to say that I didn't party, but we didn't go to the show with beer or high or, you know, I may have smoked a joint or something, but not like on blow and right. stuff. You know, we, we wouldn't bring it in the building. And I'm not going to say that never happened, but that was just kind of a taboo thing there, even for the party guys, man. So, right. 
happen, but it didn't happen often. Yeah, but let's not let those last few sentences he said there wrap up what that video was about. The one thing that he said was amazing was he said if he was booking and it was his deal, you would have been a main event guy. And that says so much right there, Wolfie D. He said Vince Russo was booking, that would have been a Jamie deal. But (laughs) if Jerry Jarrett, who is one of the most respected guys in professional wrestling of all time, he would have put you in the main event, Wolfie D. That's huge, bro. I mean, I mean, it is, man, and uh, it humble is very humbling, man. Um, and then to hear him, I mean, or to know that I'm, I'm almost positive it was his decision to put the titles on me and Brian Lee uh, in TNA. Yeah. And so again, that's, I mean, that's he, 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 he's given me the props and giving me the rub over the year, you know? Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, if you think about TNA at that time, his his son was the number one heel, and that's what you were. Your character slash you got you guys had a heel faction that was getting over his baby faces, but yeah. you know, as the Booker says, you guys were heels. So it would have been you and Jarrett, <laughs> you know what I mean, you and yeah. Jeff as the heels. So it may have kept you out of that title spot, but. Having you as the tag teams, that's usually that second tier yeah. main event guy, you know. Yeah. So, And then you can even see there because in that whole thing with us getting the titles, uh, I think the timeline would be somewhere in there. You know, we were having a feud back and forth with America's Most Wanted. So, you know, even on the times when we didn't have the belts, we were still – that that angle that was the tag team title angle, you know what I mean? So there's absolutely the, the two the, the two top teams, or how you know however you want to say it. But in there comes Vince Russo, right? In there out goes Jerry, right? In there, Vince Russo does not know what to do with his former tag team champions that happened to start getting over so well that people started chanting evil. That's what that's you know we've you hear some of the Vince Russo comparisons and he he even says it you know he, you can tell there was two totally opposite styles he says it and you can even put it in uh, that that scenario of us in TNA he right. looked what he thought was here's a good heel team I'm putting the straps on them right Russo comes in Jerry leaves oh lord this heel tag team that got over I don't know what to do they're not they're not. <laughs> clowns so uh, right where are the johnsons at or the shane (laughs) twins or whatever anyway i mean to me he was a little more as i've heard so many people say vince russo booked the sizzle and not the steak and you know you've got to have that sizzle don't mean anything without that steak you know and 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 also i want to i want to say this i'm not knocking vince in any way right not that he's going. You know, I'm saying this because he's going to give me a job somewhere tomorrow. No, so <laughs> I'm saying this because I, you know, I, I'm comparing the two styles. Is and that's that's what we're talking about. Not who's right or wrong. Uh, I tend to say Jerry's right, but uh, you, you know, know I, I, he had great success. It's hard to knock somebody that's successful. So sure, and all due respect, if Jerry Jarrett and Vince Russo are standing there, there is zero comparison. Honestly, no, I'm no. just saying that. Right, and right. hey, I'll take the heat on that one. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, we're I don't not out to slag. Heat. I'm just saying, yeah. man. Ain't about. Uh, it's just two different styles, and that, totally. that, that shows you, though, uh, my my story there. That just shows you how true what he said was. Absolutely, and I would have loved to have seen. I think all of our listeners would have loved to have seen a good main event run with Wolfie D and Slash. Man, that would have been awesome. But hey, you know the idea that the man. <laughs> the man that we're talking about today, Jerry Jarrett, of course, we're doing this Jerry Jarrett tribute show. You know, the man would have put you in that spot, man. That tells you a lot right there. And it, 
seventies and the eighties, by God. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. I mean, can you see Wolfie D in a pair of woolies and some shooter boots? <laughs> All I see is a black and white picture of me with my my fisty cuffs up. <laughs> I love it. My, oh my, my god. My arms up like a little boxer, the old tiny boxer. <laughs> I love it, man. <laughs> Maybe you wear like one of those terry cloth robes or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, well, you know, I think, you know, if you can say anything about Jerry Jarrett, I think you got to say innovator and genius when it comes to professional wrestling. And, you know, uh, you know, as we wrap up this part of the show we go in to ask wolfie d anything is there anything you'd like to wrap up as far as just your tribute to jerry jarrett i mean i've said it and said it said it man i pretty much say if it weren't for him you probably wouldn't know who pg-13 was if it wasn't for him i wouldn't have been able to go and do an autograph sign at the cave cave, uh from for people that knew me from 30 years ago and you know have uh, have four hours of fun with my with my partner and uh, yeah. walk away with uh, an, a, a good amount of money for doing it. So yeah, it's that's, awesome. That's that's what he's done for me. Is I've been able to make money uh, sometimes a living, sometimes as a uh, you know uh, what do you call that supplemental income. Right. But right at, at times. I made a living as a professional wrestler for many years. So yeah. that's because of him. Yeah. And I mean, all of the us as fans, the opportunity that he gave me. Is yeah. Re- yeah. All of us as fans, I think all of us as fans of you and, and PG 13, all of us are, are thankful that he gave you that opportunity because, you know, we, we got to see you guys perform. We got to see you guys do what you all should have been doing, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like we say, I, I hate leaving people out. I, I also have to appreciate, you know, and as I do and as I always have, I appreciate Lawler for going along with it. Sure. And even in Jerry's absence, uh, when Lawler would take over for keeping us around and him liking us too and trusting us and believing in us and for Randy Hales for pushing us and getting us to that next level and, uh, you know, then then all the other stuff that happened after, man. But the, like I say, the first thing, is that knock on his door and uh, going in his office and making him making him giggle? Yeah, if there's a holy trinity <laughs> of PG thirteen, it's definitely Jerry Jarrett, Jerry Lawler, and Randy Hales. And God bless them all. You know, I know Jerry. We lost Jerry, but I hope Jerry Lawler makes a great recovery. Randy, I hope you have great health as long as as provided. And honestly, just. Thank you all for for getting PG thirteen where they were because we we really enjoyed that. So, but I'd say this man, we've given our tribute to Jared Jarrett, and I say we just ask Wolfie a few questions. What do you say about that? Let's do it. All right, DJ, hit the music. Right, we are back with Ask Wolfie D anything on this very special tribute to Jerry Jarrett. And once again, you know, we we've had a good time here talking about Jerry, listening to Jerry talk about you. Obviously, doesn't replace the fact that we would have loved to have had him as a guest, but things on that level just didn't ever work out. Now, that being said, we're going to start going to all the veterans now. <laughs> all the veterans. We're all going for it. So if you are out there and you're hearing this and you haven't been on our show, Doug Gilbert, you're coming up, I promise. So <laughs> if we could ever nail down Doug, Tommy, you know, George Weingroff, Danny Davis. I mean, there's so many guys we need yeah. to get on this show. But anyway, Kid Cash, this, Kid Cash I mean, come on. <laughs> So, all right. This first question is actually these all three are from the same listener cause effect on Instagram. This first one is a question. Now, I know you refused to work with the guys that Buddy Wayne wanted you to work with because he was wanting you to put him over and give him the titles and all that. But and, and, and have you ever just flat out refused to work with somebody? Mm, let me think. Hmm. 
I mean, I think maybe I have probably hinted at I really don't like working with this person, <laughs> something like that, um, or you know, ahead of time, like later in my career, ahead of time, you yeah, know, I can almost say, okay, I will only work with such and such, or I won't work with the, you know, you got to give me sure. But I don't think I've like ever like walked out of the road warrior thing, but we ended up going back anyway, so that don't count, right? And, um, and that wasn't the road warriors fault. That was not, no, you, no. you would have worked the road warriors every night. If so. Oh yeah. 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 But no, I don't, I don't think I've, I've just refused to wrestle anybody that I can think of, man. I know you said you refused to take Sid's power bomb. <laughs> well, but Sid didn't know that. Yeah. Right. I just, uh, you know, I told Randy to tell him, you know, something, whatever. I don't know what we told him, but <laughs> that was like, what he the was uglies. okay with it. He didn't have a problem with it. Okay. Well, Harry, there you go. <laughs> I can imagine Randy going to oh, Sid, <laughs> but anyway, it, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. It, that shows you're a total pro. We, you know, that's awesome. You know, as long as you, you know, I guess we're there, you were willing to work with just about anybody. So that's cool. All right. Well, thank you for that question. The next question, this one's kind of cool too. So what kind of TV shows you watching right now, man? What what show are you into right now? Uh, Poker face. Um, heard that's good, man. Yeah. Um, so the other one I watch. There's a f- they're on. I hate it because they're all on different stuff, and so right. I remember which ones on what, or yeah. Nah, I didn't watch that last episode. Um, and a, a lot of times I'm more of a movie dude. I'll just I've seen so many of the movies of, that on Prime and stuff like that that probably nobody else would ever watch. <laughs> <laughs> and the good ones too, but yeah. yeah. Uh, what about- I just saw Megan. If anybody's not seen that, I thought it was cool. I've seen some bad reviews on it, but the thing that it is with Chucky, no, nah, this bitch will fuck Chucky up. And the reason I say that <laughs> is because she can control fucking technology and shit. And that's real. And that's scary that yeah. I'm, you know, this is like the Terminator cross with, with, uh, Chucky plus the internet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She, Alexa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, Siri. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. God help us with that happen. Uh, Tulsa King is uh, another show that I watched that I really liked with Sylvester Stallone. Oh yeah. Um, there's there's been a lot, man. But I'll binge watch them, and then like it's hard for me to remember. Uh, you know, which ones they all are, but I, I've watched quite a few of them, but those Man, are, are, what am I watching now? And I'd say those are both the most recent. Okay. That, those are some great ones. Poker face is awesome. So are you, my wife and, and currently the household is wrapped up in the Wednesday. Murdoch. Wednesday. It was good. Wednesday. I gotta, gotta give props to that. I really like that. Okay, cool. What about these Alec Murdoch trials going on right now? Have you heard about this? I started to watch the documentary. Oh, bro. Time. But as well, I don't know 100% what the whole deal is, but I've... Uh, so I'll give you a rundown, and I, I recommend there's one on HBO Max, there's one on Netflix. They are similar, but you want to watch both, even though you'll have a lot of the repeat in it. Basically, this family is a long line of lawyers, heavily powered attorney general solicitors in this county that they've lived in, in Hampton County, South Carolina. And allegedly, each of the family essentially has a murder under their belt. Now, again, five bodies connected to him. Five bodies connected to the judge and all that shit. Well, he's not a judge, but he's a very high powered attorney that gets addicted to Oxycontin. And and he's allegedly killed his wife and son. And it's so crazy. I don't want to spoil much else. But yeah, it's it's wrapped the fam. We're watching it nonstop right now. So anyway, but I, I recommend. The, it's called the Low Country Murdaw. Look that up on HBO Max, and then there's another one on Netflix. Like I said, very similar, but also some differences in both. So, yeah. Anyway, that's some true crime stuff for everybody out there if y'all are into that. So, anyway, so the next question, thank you for answering, by the way, the shows that you're into. Those are all very good ones. So, the next question is, what's the most amount of matches you've wrestled in one day? Uh, I think probably, well, <laughs> there's no telling. Like the, I think the most shows in a day is like three. 
always did. You always did two though on Saturdays because you did Memphis TV and you did Nashville. So Nashville that night, and yeah. Then you got to think. Okay, probably TV was one match, and then yeah. Nashville for me and Jamie at the beginning could have been two matches a piece due yeah. to like you know uh, a tag and two singles or something like that. And Nashville, that I'm pretty sure that happened a few times. So that'd be like three matches in a day. So I'd say probably three would be about the the highest. I would think maybe four. Okay, and and what year do you think was your absolute busiest? Where you were from January first to December thirty first, you were almost wrestling every day. What do you remember? Um. Well, from from ninety three. You know, through 95 and 6, with the latter end being probably warm because that's when we would do, we was doing Memphis and um, Memphis and ECW and WWF at the same time. So, yeah. Okay. Working going on there, too. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. for a long time, no matter who I was wrestling for or how many we were wrestling for, I mean, we always were doing, you know, at least four, five, six days a week, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's pretty crazy. I just tried to – that was not part of the question. I just <laughs> wanted to kind of see if there was any further there we can dig. So basically you're saying three, but maybe four in a day would yeah. be – your most so yeah that's 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 busy working right there brother <laughs> so do you want to do one more sure all right one more and this one is from our old buddy mac Aronin. he's a hizuti mizark on twitter so <laughs> he was saying this one kind of ties into jerry that's why i wanted to add this one in if you had any opportunity to spend much time with eddie gilbert do you have any eddie stories <laughs> that's that's one i do have like a funny one or it's 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 funny, but it's uh, it's just something that carried on for a minute of the, a saying. But I think it's just me and him, and uh, he was driving. <laughs> and I was, you know, uh, nineteen years old, just fucking around. <laughs> and I reached over and I just he had on shorts, and I grabbed some of the hairs like on his thighs, <laughs> just pulled them <laughs> like <ripped> them. <laughs> just like ripped them out, and. Uh, he just looks at me. With this, he didn't really flinch or anything. He just looks at me with this serious look, and he goes, "Don't fuck with the hair on my legs, son." <laughs> <laughs> and I started laughing. I said, "I'm just fucking with you." He didn't get mad or anything, but yeah. And so that's just it, we would say that. Me and Jamie would say that. And don't fuck with. Her. <laughs> she had those still. You could eBay them easily. So uh, yeah. <laughs> so the side note that Macaronin put on here is talking about that he heard you talking about the USWA school training for Jerry. He was one of the guys you trained, and he can confirm how hot it was at the Jarrett Farms. He yeah. said the mat was so hot if you took a bump, you learned how to do a kip up at the same time, or you got burnt. <laughs> you wanted to get up off of it real quick, that's for sure. Yeah. So anyway, and you know what's funny is I've never I don't know Mac A. Ronan's real name. He mm -hmm. he's at Hizudi Mizark, but I don't know. He I don't know if if you would anyway if you knew all the guys that were there, but he was I one of them apparently for sure. But I know I still know a few of them over there. Yeah, but that reminds me of a I may have told this about Lawler before ribbing me when we would work those car lots uh, after TV. Yeah. That's another one you might have to throw in there. So it could be like five matches if we did a if we did morning TV, car lot, then national. Who knows how many matches? Right. But anyway, um, so that ring would be set up in the you know middle of the summer, sitting out there in the sun, man. Uh, you know, waiting on us to get there. You know, all morning. So that mat would be scalded and hot, scalded and hot. And uh, I worked all the ones. He snap mares me over, boom, covers me. And I feel that mat on my back. I kick out. Boom. He just throws me back down. <laughs> Every time I kept kicking out, he just throw me back down to cover me. <laughs> yeah. I just rolled out. <laughs> I shoot rolled out. Oh, man. That's hilarious. And I can imagine how hot it would be. But, yeah. you know, you're talking about five matches in one day. Dude, that's more than some guys wrestle in a year. <laughs> 
I mean, I'm just saying, not necessarily maybe a year, but seriously, if they're like once a month guys or something. And yeah. again, 40 milers, nothing wrong with those guys. Absolutely. The world needs them as much as anybody. But anyway, yeah. Well, that, I just saw that that was a question about Jerry and I wanted to get that one in before we, you know shut down for the day but anyway this one has been an awesome tribute to jerry jarrett i hope you guys enjoyed it you know i've had fun being able to reminisce about him and talk to talk to you about him and 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 learn a little bit about the man so if you want to brother take us out oh just thanks again for listening to us guys and uh we'll have another hopefully good show for you next week we we work hard trying to get the people together and uh, get the times right and get the subject matter correct. But thanks for continuing to listen to us, man. For Jimmy across the street is Wolfie D saying, see you next week. And now a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling. The podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Jimmy Street and the Plastic Chic Jared are the undisputed tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics to superstar interviews to action figure expertise. This team does it all. And all they ask is, give me back my pro wrestling. Every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. That's right. It's the talk of Middle Tennessee, the channel you love to hate and the channel you hate to love. It's Brian Turner from Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. And if you're looking for matches from Wolfie D to Jerry Lawler to Dusty Rhodes and the team that put a pimp before your eyes and a goatee between your thighs, booty call on Athena, go to lostwrestling.com. See, I made it easy for you. Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. Booyah. Join me, Gene Jackson, for the Jackson Interaction Podcast, where I'll be doing one-on-one interviews with people from the world of professional wrestling, as well as stand-up comedy. You can get them anywhere podcasts are available in both video and audio form, but you can find them all at GeneJacksonPod.com. Hey, 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 it's the Heat Boss of Scotty Blaze. Now I'm inviting all of y'all to join me on my brand new podcast, Turning Up the Heat with the Heat Miser Scotty Blaze. So what are you waiting for? Come on over and join me. I'll be covering all the events of the day, global, national, pop culture, movies, gaming, whatever sounds interesting. But I'll also be playing some awesome skating shuffle music from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s. Anything that has a good beat, I'm going to be playing it. You can rest assured. Come on over. T-U-T-H radio.com. The podcast is on every major podcast platform. See you then. Hey everyone, this is Shane from Insane Shane's World. I release wrestling figures of enhancement talent, mid-card wrestlers, and wrestlers that you never thought would have a figure available. So if you're interested in adding a really cool and rare figure to your collection, then don't hesitate to contact me at shamtheman73 at gmail.com. That's S-H-A-M-the-man73 at gmail.com. You can also join my Facebook group. Just search Insane Shane's World. So that was another great episode. Hey, Wolfie, tell them where they can find you on social media. Jimmy, they can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. I'm just kidding. 
Uh, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, my personal page is Warren Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. I'm on Instagram, at Warren Wolf 13. You can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, at Live Wolfie D. Here's the thing. Wolfie always has offers for his autographed photos. He has a selection of some awesome photos from throughout his career that he will autograph and personalize any way that you want him to. Just contact him either directly at his personal Facebook page or through any one of our other pages, and we'll make sure you get in contact directly with Wolfie. Get those photos, right, Wolfie? Yeah, I've got some good stuff on there, you know, to help with the podcast. Folks, if you can't get out to a show to meet Wolfie D, there's nothing like that, especially for the fans of PG-13 and Wolfie D. And before we go, you can always find me, your host, Jimmy Street, at James Rock Street on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And hey, Jimmy, before we go real quick, I just want to add in there, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate, first of all, the work you've done for this podcast. You have worked your butt off. Secondly, the people that are liking the page. Beyond that, even more, is the people that are listening. And we really appreciate that. Yeah, and remember, guys, the podcast drops a new episode every Monday at noon, and our past episodes are streaming now on demand on all major podcast formats. Thanks again. I got a cap for you, don't. He got a cap for you, don't. I got a cap for you, don't. He 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 got a and here we go. The original white boy that came out sagging, not bragging, don't be hating, cause I'm spitting the truth. Still loving it, color. Don't rush your mother. Utilize a hubcap, I'm like any other. Back in the day, I was NOD, and I was P to the G, plus the one and the three. In case you forgot, they call me Wolfie D. Been cloned and copied so many times. Tired of suckers taking credit for what is mine. You know who you are without me name dropping wrestling's first white boy coming out hip hop. Been doing it like this since 92. Lay low for a while when you thought I was through. Listen real close to these rhymes that I've injected. This shit's so sick it makes your ears get infected. Mad skills, no faking, there is no one great. Cause I'm bringing more folks and over one for later. Not here to play games, so you better be real. You don't like me, so what? I really don't care. All the time I keep ticking and I can't be stopped. You suck a step to the side unless you want to get dropped. When my finish, I'll straight knock you out. Please allow me to tell you what it's all about. Gonna wind it up. Then I'm driving it home, it's Wolfie D, baby Huh, I got a cap for your dome I got a cap for your dome You got a cap for your dome You got a cap for your dome This has been a James Rock Street production